What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. This is Greg Miller. Hey! This is Anthony Gallegos. This is Justin Davis. Rap, rap. Call him Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's or not. Or Justice Dolphin. I saw a pretty yeah. amazing uh, <laughs> rendition, an artist rendition of uh, Justice yeah. Dolphin. It's my favorite thing. My, the, the podcast that I'm on regularly is not big, but it's getting big enough that the photoshops are starting Tech to happen. Tech fetish. Yeah. Every, Every Friday? Friday? OK, I was going to say Friday. And, I wasn't and sure the photoshops are my new favorite thing. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so this is a pretty big week for uh, the video games. Is it? Yeah. OK. Well, you know, you don't I just like the way you said it. <laughs> the video games. <laughs> That's good. You got Dishonored. You got XCOM. You got Ooh. Walking Dead Ooh. Episode 4. Yeah. All coming out this week. Yeah. All best on PC. Oh, whoa. <laughs> get out of here. XCOM's great on PS3. I'm playing it. No, it is. Actually, XCOM's perfectly fine on all consoles. But um, I don't know. I, I, I can't decide what order to play these games in. I Walking can. Dead first, because you can get through the fastest. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you're like I wanted I I got my copy of XCOM last week and I actually was mad because I wanted to try to get through Borderlands 2. Finally finished Borderlands 2 XCOM. this weekend and I I started playing XCOM instead. Yeah. Then I'm jumping back to Borderlands, trying to beat everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and, and now it's just like I'm gonna have to put Borderlands aside because I want to yeah. play more XCOM. You have to shelf it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've been playing XCOM. I have XCOM. Been. XCOM. Uh, tell, give us your impressions. Our review is up now. Yeah, yeah. it is. I really, I really. Eight point two. Eight point two. Eight point two. Which is I, great. Some people are upset about that. Yeah, story, I, I totally. I mean, I'm like, I'd say seven missions in somewhere in there, and I, I think an eight two is totally fair. It's, it's a great game. I really love playing it, but it does have like there's a barrier to entry to it. It is very complicated. There's a lot of things going on, and then there's like. You think those are the knocks against it? I mean, I haven't read Steve's review yet. That's, oh, those are some of my reviews. Like, mine, mine's on like a presentation front. It's not like you know. Some like, people wish it was more complicated. That's what, that was part of his uh, uh, criticism. He really I liked mean, the story and the character development, and he thought it could be a little bit more hardcore for the for the, for the hardcore XCOM fans. Sure, but that's I, what they've been trying to balance with this whole thing. Right. That's what. Like, I haven't played XCOM yet, but the impression I get is that that's a game that is, they're really gonna have a hard time winning with people, like, because it's never gonna be as hardcore as the old games were, which were bananas. But it's also going to be like a lot more complicated and complex than most games that come out exactly. today. So people think to that they do it because they're trying to develop for consoles. I don't think that's the case at all. I think if anything, they're just trying to develop it for an audience in 2012. Exactly. Yeah, they're looking for a mainstream audience. 1994. Yeah. 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 Like I have positive memories of the old XComs, but I bought them on Steam and went back and played them. Uh, you know, within the last year or so, those games are mean. Like they are really mean to the player, and they don't explain anything. And like you will lose the first mission I think easily. People like, should be happy to get. Should just be happy to get an XCOM game ever again. Yeah. yeah. Like honestly, like yeah. they're like, oh, I can't believe they're trying to do all these things to turn it into something where they can make money. Which first of all, they're a business, but yeah. second of all, it's like it's like, you know, they they did not have to ever make XCOM again. There was no reason. If they did, it could have been a shooter. They didn't need to make it a strategy. They're well, trying. Yeah. Ah. Like, well, right. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, as a publisher to do this, it shows that they're willing to take a great risk on sure. it. Sure. And yeah, anyone yeah. that thinks that Firaxis doesn't like love the old game or love turn-based XCOM is just insane. Yeah, it's crazy that it's here now. Because wasn't this XCOM just announced early this year? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. up until then, we were expecting XCOM, this first-person shooter, was supposed to be coming out. And yeah, then, possibly third. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what's going on with that? But like, yeah, this was just announced. Like they. Yeah. Uh, I think. It was yeah, and I, I want to bet against you, didn't I, about this? I, that this one would be out <laughs> before the first-person shooter? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Good old game scoop. Yeah. As a big fan of turn-based strategy games, uh, I just think it's awesome that there's yeah. a big high-profile yeah. turn-based strategy game coming to consoles that, to retail. That's, yeah, that's another thing. Like, when was the last time we had a big? It's sixty bucks, right? Full full price, yeah, like yeah. a big sixty-dollar turn-based strategy experience. I can't Valkyria? even remember. Like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah, and sure. this is definitely better than that. Yeah, and I love. Well, I mean, no, I, this might be fighting words for Greg Miller. I don't know. No, there was no trophies in Valkyria Chronicles. <laughs> 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 but that's like part of what I'm drawing from, right? Is like for me, you know, I played PC games a little bit back in the day, Men in Black, of course. So for me, you know, not having the XCOM PC experience or whatever, Valkyria was my turn-based like you know thing. That's where I I've played more Valkyria Chronicles, more hours of Valkyria turn-based than any other turn-based game. You ever didn't have before. a PlayStation? I did. 
Yeah. You didn't play that Final Fantasy Tactics? No. Oh, Final God. Fantasy, come on. What am I, Ryan Clements? I got things to do. I got <laughs> girls battle, to meet. Advance Wars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Advance Wars I played. See, what I'm, I'm not saying I never played it turn-based. I'm saying Valkyria was really the one that I sunk hours and hours and, and hours XCOM into. XCOM has those same gameplay elements in a much cooler world. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm down with that. But what I'm saying is that it, it, I think Valkyria leads you in a little bit better. Whereas XCOM, it was like a few tutorial missions, and it was like whoo, all the stuff. Oh, yeah, XCOM, do. I think. And I that's feel what like, I was saying about I how like it was more they, complicated. I feel like they expect you to lose. Oh yeah. Well, first. that was the thing. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I was, I you get to name your characters, and then there's permanent death or whatever. But I, like I, that. I, like I that. named my first round of characters. I'm like Mike Mitchell, my roommate, and Colin <laughs> Campbell, because this guy's from Britain. Yada, yada. And those guys are just getting massacred out there. I'm like, <laughs> damn. Like, I had all these like delusions of grandeur that my Hulk Hogan was gonna be with me forever and ever. Dead two missions in. You know what I mean? <laughs> you like, can make a really good Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You got the handlebar mustache. mustache. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I gotta, I gotta get on XCOM. Yeah. I, I love turn-based strategy. I had an Advance Wars fan site in 2002. Nice. It's still on the web. That was I love, before I, I was doing. Advance Wars what, too. What's the traffic like too? What, uh, well, there's no Advance Wars, Wars games fans. anymore. Com. Like when an Advance Wars game comes out, the traffic spikes significantly. <laughs> um, AdvanceWarsNet.com. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> and it's it's still on the web. And that was little Justin Davis in high school making websites and. Advance so Wars was great. That's pretty good. Uh, now, Justin, you've been playing Dishonored. Yeah, I have. And I we, have. yeah, our our review for that is up, and we give it a nine point two. I want to say nine point two, amazing, and it's getting those reviews all over the place. Lots mm. and lots of nines and tens. So um, I'm really, really amped for this one. You have been enjoying it, but maybe not quite as much. Sure, as I am. I am not. For me, it's not anywhere close to being a game of the year candidate. Um, I definitely am enjoying it. If my personal review would be a seven ish. Um, wow. I think I think so. I, I well, I sort of have a problem with stealth games in general. Um, I feel like stealth games are great until you get discovered. Then they kind of fall apart, and I've always kind of felt that way. Like that's when you see sort of seams in the AI, or you know, it's not that fun. Like you just want to restart the mission again, and you got to go through what you already did. And it's fun to be all creepy and stealthy once, but if you have to do that a second time or do that a third time because you made a mistake, then you kind of just want to rush through it, yeah, and then yeah. you sort of get caught in this spiral of being discovered a lot. I will say, Dishonored though offers you chances to. Be stealthy if you want, and then you can be like a weird mix of stealthy and like a murderer. Yeah. Like they encourage you to be like the guy that appears, kills. Like there's a part in Cam's video review actually that showcases it really well, where he kills a guy and then purposely throws his body over a balcony to shock everyone, yeah. which is like something you can do. You can do that to distract everyone, and then you're like, now I'm out. Yeah, there's, this. there's a few things that I do really, really like about it, and that, that it does stealth a little bit differently than other games. And uh, one thing that I love is when you get discovered, that's not necessarily game over, like in Splinter Cell. Like you can run and hide. And like the guards will like they're persistent, but like being discovered isn't like the end of the mission. Like gotcha. you can just run and they'll chase you. Like I swam underwater for a while, and like then they couldn't find me anymore. And I thought that was cool that like you're not just stuck in some alarm state like forever. Like um, I think that uh, one thing though, like if I had to level one criticism against it that is like the most glaring to me is that. It has no way of telling you if you're actually hidden. Yep. Like that is that mm. is like the number one thing. Like. Skyrim does it with like an eyeball to tell you, and it tells yep. you like with the line over if you're not hidden. Like other games, like Splinter Cell is a great example where it goes black and white when you're actually in the shadows and hidden. This game, no indication if you're hidden. That's at weird. All That's weird. For it, it, you can be in a shadow, and the guy, and then you'll be seen. You're like, I thought I was hidden. Nah, you weren't. Yeah, guards have an indication when they see you. Like you'll see the little thing. The bar exactly, but you don't have a yeah. thing telling but, you like right now you are unseen. You yeah. are, you cannot be seen. Like, and like sometimes like there doesn't seem to be too much rhyme or reason. Like you have this ability to like teleport short distances. And sometimes they'll like see you make that hop, and sometimes they might not. Like it's really just kind of the luck of the draw whether you're going to escape. Um, the other thing that I really do like about the game is I feel like it strikes the perfect balance between the guards being persistent. Um, like in Splinter Cell, they will literally leap across rooftops and chase you. <laughs> like they're relentless, and it's sort of like it's like oh you got seen, and then you got to run halfway across the city to finally get hidden again. And then other games like in Skyrim, you can literally shoot a dude in the face with an arrow, and then he'll be like oh. Must have been the wind. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> game, this game, it's like the, it's like they have limits. It's like yeah. the, if you go up on top of a building, they're like, well, yeah, can't do that. And yeah, so they, they, they strike it. a good balance between being really persistent and dangerous. Like you don't want to be caught, but it's not like super annoying where you got to spend ten minutes trying to escape. So I like, I like that balance. They struck a lot. The IGN review recommends Dishonored if you enjoy Deus Ex and Bioshock. Do you agree with those recommendations? I agree with that, and I think it's kind of, it's like I was talking with Mitch Dyer, another one of our editors, last night, and. He thought it was funny how everyone's talking about how refreshing this game is and how there's really nothing else like it. And he's like, this, he's like, Deus Ex came out like a year ago, and it is a lot like Deus Ex, like Human yeah. Revolution. So it's like, have... it's like it is refreshing, and that it, there aren't that many games that are like this. But yeah. 
Deus Ex uh, was doing a lot of the I same like thing. Bioshock, and I didn't like Deus Ex. So uh, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Well, I, think, I mean, it's like Deus Ex in the sense that, like, here choice. are some tools. Figure out how you're going to go in there. Okay. And handle so it's not like I have a lame battery that makes me not do cool things. No. Got it. And no. I would say, I would say, in my opinion, Dishonored is probably more open than Deus Ex. Yeah, I like. I was going to say I liked Deus Ex a lot, but. It seems like there's like three ways to do every exactly. objective, and They're like, that's this it. game's so open, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can crawl like... through this human-sized uh, vent, <laughs> yeah. or you can hack this door, or you can kill dudes. Yeah, Those that's, are your that's three. kind of it. Um, and so this feels more. I, like, I did enjoy it though. So. This feels more like a proper sandbox. Like okay. I, you can literally like you know go all the way around and go in the back door, or, like do whatever. Yeah, um, back door. People compare it to Bioshock <laughs> yeah. mostly because of the aesthetic. <laughs> like it has a very Bioshock aesthetic, and like you know you find food all over the place and eat it just like okay. you do in Bioshock. Good, good, good. I like eating a blue potion and a red potion. It's just like Cookie Monster like, to shove There is, stuff there in is a blue potion and a red potion. Yeah, I actually mean, hadn't made that. It, an aesthetic, like aesthetically, it looks very like much like Bioshock. That's Even cool. the character design. And you find audio logs, and that gives exactly. you background about the world. Um, the complaints I'm hearing are actually with the story and, and the the character development. Yeah, I mean, I don't play for the story actually at all. Like Corvo is a mute, and so he's not actually not the most interesting character. Yeah. But I don't, like, I don't understand the decision to make him silent. But uh, you the, the protagonist you play as? Yeah. yeah. But like to me, it's like I don't. I'm not playing for the story as much as I am just for the fun of seeing how to go through a mission, like figuring out if I'm going to be able to do it silently or if I get caught. How am I going to get out of this really crappy situation? Another thing that I really liked about this game, and I'm trying to. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but so it is mission based. You do mission one, mission two, mission three, and uh, and within those missions, it's sort of each is a huge sandbox. And decisions you make in each mission changes the game in like significant ways. And yeah. lots of games have a bullet on their back of their box that's like, oh, you can affect the world. And this, I feel like, handles that better than yeah. most. I, um, so I poisoned some dudes. I'll just I'll put it that way. I killed a I, bunch of people, yeah. too. <laughs> I poisoned some dudes, and then that affected me later in the game. Like, I was doing a good thing, but then later it had like bad repercussions yeah, that like I hadn't a, like thought too much about. Like, I kill, if you kill a bunch of people, for instance, a bunch of like zombie like creatures will appear throughout the level later and so then you'll have to deal with that mm -hmm. yeah. and so like there was like one situation i ran into where a side a side objective hidden side objective was like save these two people you know if you can from the guards cuz these guards are going to beat them up and probably kill them yeah but I, I had spawned so many zombies, and the zombies were chasing me that when I ran to them, the zombies just ate them all. And I was like, <laughs> well, guards and the people alike are all dead now because of me killing people like a badass so much earlier. Like you, mm -hmm. they, you are definitely encouraged to not kill people if you can, if it's not necessary. That's yeah. cool. I like, so, I mean, the reason, I guess I don't have like a tick box of reasons. Like, these are the six reasons that it's not a 9.2 on the Justin Davis scale. It's more like games don't start at a 10 and lose points for the things they, they do wrong. They start neutral and they gain points for being awesome. And the game just seems sort of, you know, first person stealth action. I don't know. You know, I sort of, I just don't dig it as much as other people, I don't think. I'm excited for it. Greg, you should play too. Okay. Um, you want to play co op? Is there <laughs> no. co op? No. No. no, there's no, no. co op. <laughs> Uh, there's all of a sudden lots of good stealth stuff coming out, it seems like, because there's Dishonored, there was Mark of the Ninja, which you yeah. guys should all play Game's if you great. haven't played that yet, and then uh, a new Hitman's coming out soon. Ooh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Dishonored, I would say, has more in, more in common with Hitman than any other game people have compared it to. I know you're a Hitman fan. I am. But now this new Hitman has uh, has received some criticism. Maybe it's the the marketing of the new Hitman. So I don't, I'm wondering if you're... If, as I, yeah, so when I saw a, a Hitman demo, I was like, oh, it seemed like ridiculously linear, like there was only one way to get through it, which is like the antithesis of what Hitman's always been about. But then I've heard that other demos of Hitman since then have made it seem like it is classic Hitman, where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. here's a box, figure out how I to played kill a these I three played guys. a bunch of Hitman back in the day on uh, the Hitman. PS2. I liked what I saw at E3 when I got to sit down and play it, where it was, yeah, like it was the Chinatown one or whatever, where there's the guy in the middle of the area. Yeah, you yeah. could poison his fish, you could mm -hmm. drop a car See, that's on him, you could that's, do this. That's, that's demo, classic right? Hitman. You can yeah. learn a pattern, and through his pattern, you'll see there's like eight different places where yeah, yeah, yeah. you could take him out as benignly as strangling him, yeah. or you could... Dress up as a delivery guy exactly. and blow him up. Yeah. Or, or, or a like bunch poison of food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You, I, I mean, marketing-wise, yeah, they've, they've done some missteps that probably what are you talking about harmed, them with, <laughs> harmed them with, with a very small vocal minority of the community. Sure, yeah. okay. And then, uh, but overall, like... I, I'm st it's still going to be probably one of my most anticipated games of next year. Of next year? Isn't it it's out in November? Year? Is it out in November? Yeah. That's not that crazy. Say, I thought I it got delayed. November 20th. Wow. Yep. I thought it got delayed. See going up I against the Wii U, yeah. huh? Well, it should be delayed. <laughs> <laughs> no, not because it's not a bad game. Just not because it's not a good game, but because it's like, yeah, so much because stuff. you just said, like a Wii season. U, Halo's going to be out. Yeah, like, but I mean, that's all-stars day, too, right? At this point, right? this fall's more open than next spring. Like, it's just things are getting bananas all the time, so. Things, yeah. 
things lighten up after Assassin's Creed. There's like not as many. You, know, you still have Halo and you still have the Wii U launch. But yeah, I'm just sort saying. Well, I'm just saying out. November in particular is just so bad that I just feel like that's yeah. that's a tough month for a game like Hitman. That's always a weird time to put it out too. PlayStation All Stars is doing the same thing coming up, and it's like the whole point is to get it out by yeah. Black Friday, but still and get it out for Christmas sales. I get that. But yeah, but you but no, I think it's I think you're doing yourself a disservice by putting it out. That's why October is where right. everybody tries to get to, right? Yep. Because the hype builds. Kids see the things they put it on their Christmas list. Mom and Dad buy it. I don't know how many kids are. Yeah, but even if you release a game in like January, people have Christmas money to go out and buy That's things true. with. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you, it's always a gamble. Like, you don't really know. Like, I remember that Mercenaries franchise is a weird reference, but, like, going back to the PS2, that game was sort of, you know, not a new license, not a new anything. That game launched in January, and that's how it became this big success. Yeah, so like did Resident Evil 4, so yeah. did Mass Effect 2. Like, there's been other games that have released in January and done okay. Yeah. Now, granted, those two franchises are definitely bigger than something like Hitman, but I still feel like Hitman could be, like, a surprise beginning of the year release rather sure. than, like, a lost in the shuffle of November sure, sure, release. Sure, sure. Well, then also this week is episode four of The Walking Dead. Yes. I know you cannot say a lot of specifics, but you, you have played it, right? Correct. Yeah, and yeah. you've beaten it. Yes. All right. Twice. And your review will be up Tuesday. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be up. <laughs> and that's all he can say. <laughs> yeah. um, the Sorry. iOS version <laughs> is lagging behind if anybody's playing it on mobile. There was a recent, uh, a very interesting iOS development uh, over the weekend that came up. And it involves your beat and something that's very important to Anthony. This is Angry Birds and Star Wars yeah. coming together, joining forces. Oh. Oh. oh! Angry Birds, Star Wars, or yeah, Star Wars, Angry Birds. Well, who gets top billing there? In Angry, Angry Birds, Star Wars. Oh, really? Angry Birds, Star Wars. No colon, just one. Sign of the times. Yeah. So what's um, it? What's it about? It's gonna be a game <laughs> yeah, and so. a, li a, mer a line of merchandise. Well, that's not surprising. Yeah, yeah, they're going absolutely bananas with it. They're doing a whole. So it is a game coming out November eighth, um, and it's gonna be sort of traditional Angry Birds sort of flinging style, and it's gonna have the gravity mechanics from Angry Birds space. And each of the birds has been redone as a different Star Wars character. So the red bird is Luke Skywalker, and uh, the three birds are Princess Leia, um, and so on and so forth. And they're having a giant line of toys come yeah. along with it. They have over 50 licenses for <laughs> t-shirts and t-shirts and board games. Yeah, it'll be a billion dollar franchise by yeah. like, like this time next year for Is sure. Is it not already? Well, but I'm saying I mean, Star Wars Angry Birds specifically own, will be yeah. like a billion they dollar franchise. They are going to make a billion dollars. Those are two of the biggest licenses in the world. Yeah, this is what I was saying. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, Star Wars is dead to me now, and I can't believe they would do this. And what I think some of those folks don't understand that are maybe really into the extended universe and reading the books and this and that is that Star Wars has always been huge with little kids. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a reason that these older people liked it, because they were kids when they saw it, too. It's yeah. just that... Uh, sure. I mean, even if like even if you watch things like Clone Wars and stuff now, which is largely geared towards children, it's right. like, that's an awesome show, even if you're an adult Star Part of it, yeah. Part of it is because we had Empire Strikes Back, which is really the only one that was really, you know... That dealt with any sort of like mature themes. Yeah, sure. That seems hardcore. I mean, but like. Star Wars is almost like two franchises now. Like there are all these novels, like really, really good, like genuinely good sci-fi novels that just happen to be set in the Star Wars universe, and that's obviously you know for adults. But like the the cartoon and the toys, and like there's little kids that dress up as Darth Vader that might not even know that much about who Darth Vader is for Halloween. Um, that's almost like you a whole know about separate Padme. deal. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we, my wife teaches kindergarten, and her kids are obsessed with Star Wars, obsessed with Angry Birds, all oh, the yeah. Angry Birds backpacks and shirts. So the two coming together, their little heads are going to explode. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be really big. I want to play the game. I'm not interested in any of the toys. No. I'm sure Justin will get some of them sent to but me, like, and it'll be really dumb. Some of the but toys do look really clever. Like they just, it's just this weird mixture of brands. They have a Angry Birds Star Wars version of Jenga coming out. But the right. Jenga Tower is a Death Star, but then the Death Star is a pig, a pig's head. Like and then the, you fling the birds at, yeah. so, so what, what does this have to do with Jenga? Exactly. <laughs> it's just this crazy mixture of, like, let's just, and like, so it seems like very convoluted and weird, but it also like totally makes sense. You're like, yeah, I want that Jenga set. I want it. Anthony doesn't. And Anthony's shaking his head. I don't. I have enough, I, I, at this point, yeah. it takes something very special to make me want something Star Wars, even though I'm a huge fan. I just have too much stuff. I'm actually getting rid of all my Star Wars 1996 collector's edition what? 12 inch figures. So. Wow. Yeah. What? eBay? Yeah, they're just sitting in my closet. I feel it yeah. feels really dumb. You know and you're going to be listening to the Angry Birds Star Wars audiobooks <laughs> when they come out. God. The Red Birds attacked with no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Our hawk defenses could not keep up. You guys have a low of standard of, yeah. of Star Wars audiobook. They're amazing. Yeah. I know. You wrecked another wooden wall <laughs> with a glass wall outside of it. I did just finish the very last currently for sale Star Wars uh, non-abridged audiobook, so I have no more. 
So go on iTunes and look how many there are and how much money that is. I bought all that. <laughs> what are you going to do now? I don't. Re-listen do, to them. Do we need to put you on like Suicide Watch? <laughs> read, okay? read real books. I don't want to do that, though. <laughs> Who has time for that? Ain't nobody got time ain't, for that. I, ain't nobody got time for that. I got bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they just put out Bad Piggies. Yeah. Rovio did. Yeah, that game's I, really And I too. would think maybe that they'd like rest for a little bit, but now they just announced No rest for the wicked. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe they wanted to, but I imagine the people at LucasArts were like, well, your guys are back in the news, you're hot. Yeah. Roll it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if anybody's super upset about this news or butthurt about it, um, <laughs> you know, my, my final word would be, you know, Star Wars and Angry Birds are both for little kids. Um, and Star Wars can work for adults, but it's... You know, six year olds, seven year olds, eight year olds is gonna be awesome for them. Like, it's sort of the dream mashup that, like, it when is. you were a little kid, the two things you were really into, you wished would come together. It'd be like Mario and Star Wars coming together with yeah. your kids. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, there are Star Wars Transformers, there are all kinds of dumb are there Star really? Wars. Yeah. There, there are Transformers that transform between like a Darth Vader figure into like a trans like flying jet. That's really what's cool the, too. What's the alt history on that? What's the yeah. audio? No, there is none. It's just, it's just really silly. If, and dumb. When the Emperor but that being, that being said, you know, like, like, like George Lucas's parts. inspiration for stuff like Star Wars was things like Buck Rogers and stuff, yeah. which was also a sci-fi show very much geared to, for children, you know, yeah. and to sell toys. So right. most of your fun stuff was made to be crap to sell you toys. Oh yeah, get over yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Angry Birds Star Wars is out November 8th? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the Soon. crazy part of it. I know, right? Yeah, all those palette swaps they had to do. Whew. It must have been so intense. They made a pig head. The thing, <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Angry Birds is that it keeps getting better, though. Like, yeah, you, like, know, you, you really liked Bad Piggies. I really liked Bad Piggies, and Angry Birds Space was better than the first three Angry Birds games. That's true. And like, so they keep everything they do, like the quality of those games is increasing, and they're becoming like sort of genuine sort of puzzles that you have to solve instead of just like, you know, time wasting, fling birds, and you know, smash some stuff. They're actually like pretty clever now. So, you know, I'm excited to see what they do with this. We made the reference to no, you know, no rest for the wicked or whatever because they're putting it right out after yeah. Bad Piggies. Do you think that's because Bad Piggies isn't Angry Birds Bad Piggies? It's kind of a way to say, hey, we have this other game out too. Yeah, I mean, so I think they had to get Star Wars out before Christmas because they have sure. literally, you know, hundreds and Ton hundreds of toys. Of toys. So the bigger question is why release Bad Piggies? Why not sit on that? Mm -hmm. for a well, while? I wonder how that's done too. They they it's made done, a statement. It's, done super it's number well. one. They made a statement that it was the fastest selling. Yeah, that's game. A, but like, a what meaningless does that mean? statement. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> fastest um, this selling is the fastest, day, fastest downloaded like, game scoop. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sell many copies, but those copies sold really fast. Like, yeah. I don't know what that so, means. So so Bad Piggies is um, I don't expect that game to do as well as Angry Birds, even though it's a better game because it is more complicated. Like it's much more something for like proper gamers to sit. Like, they give you a level Proper to solve. Game. Yes. Proper gamers. Proper gamers. They give you a level to solve. They say, here's these pieces you have at your disposal. You know, go. And then they turn Ooh. you loose. Like, there's, it's kind of hard and challenging in parts, much more so than Angry Birds ever was. So, um, you know, I, I think it's really cute, and I reviewed it really positively, but I don't expect it to become, you know, a billion-dollar thing like Angry Birds. I'll play Angry Birds Star Wars. Yeah. For sure. I'm actually interested in that. Can you imagine it's going to have the theme music, and then it's going to be remixed with the Angry Birds Is music? it going to have the intro text? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be insane. Episode one. <laughs> Duck 3PO. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know any Angry Birds. You never played Angry <laughs> The most eagerly awaited arcade game of the year, the brand new Star Wars. Sound familiar? Let's check out the action.